Hi, I'm Dr. Russell Warren, and I'm an associate professor of psychology at Utah Valley University. I'm also the author of the textbook, Statistics for the Social Sciences, a General Linear Model Approach, published by Cambridge University Press. I'm here to show you some of the features in the second edition of the textbook that you may find helpful for your students. The first feature that book readers will encounter is a table of examples. When possible, I use examples from real data in the book. This table lists the examples in order of their first appearance and can help readers locate a particularly memorable example that they may want to revisit or explore further. Another feature is a series of text boxes that I call sidebars. These are digressions in the text that explore an issue that the main chapter raises. The sidebars are great material for class discussions or quizzes and also help students understand the reporting standards and applied philosophy of statistics. Additionally, almost every chapter features at least one guided practice example in which the text walks students through the mathematics of the statistical procedures that the book teaches. For students who have to learn stats through hand calculation, these guided practices are useful for showing them how to do the arithmetic of statistics. For students who need to use a computer for their statistics class, the guided practice shows what the computer is doing and helps students understand what realistic answers look like and why they get the numbers they get in the computer output. Every chapter also has several of these check yourself boxes. They are comprehension questions sprinkled periodically throughout the chapter to help students verify that they are understanding important information that the text is explaining. They are also useful for opening class discussions and generating quiz questions. At the end of every chapter, there are four features that my students find particularly useful. The first is a summary that recaps the chapter in two to four paragraphs. After that, there are a series of practical questions that serve as the basis of homework assignments when I use my book to teach. These, these questions fall into two categories, comprehension questions and application questions. The comprehension questions are like the check yourself questions and focus on whether students have mastered information that the book explicitly teaches. The application questions require students to conduct and interpret statistical analyses. The next end of chapter feature is called the software guide, which provides a step-by-step -step explanation of how to conduct the chapter's statistical procedures using Microsoft Excel and SPSS. Each step includes screenshots and detailed explanations so that students can perform the same procedures and gain experience with modern methods of analyzing data. Finally, each chapter concludes with a short section called Further Reading, where interested students and instructors can find references and a brief summary of one to four articles about the chapter topic. These articles are well written and are comprehensive to undergraduates. Two features are focused on the general linear model and help link different inferential statistics procedures together. One is the in-text explanations of the general linear model in chapters 7 through 15. These explain how the chapter's procedure is a, a member of the general linear model and how the procedure identifies relationships between variables, uses statistical weights, and produces an effect size. The second feature is called general linear moments, which are discussions that, the, that link the chapter's topic to the general linear model further and to other procedures in other chapters. Both of these features encourage students to see statistical methods as a unified family of analyses, which improves understanding and speeds up learning. At the end of the book, there are four features that students find helpful. The first is a series of six statistical tables that provide critical values for the different procedures in the book. These are typical for statistics books, and because they are based on well-known formulas, they contain the same information that any other book would have in its tables. Next is a glossary, which defines every technical term in the book in basic everyday language. The glossary is useful for students who forget a term that was introduced in the previous chapter or who do not understand a term that was introduced in the chapter that their instructor skipped. Next is a formula guide, which is a cheat sheet that lists all the formulas that are used in calculations in one place. These formulas are listed in the order that they appear in and include a brief explanation of the formula and a reference to where the formula is introduced in the book in case students want to read further or see the, the formula used in action. Finally, there is a student answer key that provides 
answers to select questions that are found at the end of the chapters so that students can verify that they are conducting the statistical procedures and answering questions correctly. Although not part of the book itself, instructors have access to a full answer key for all end of chapter questions in the book. Instructors will also have a 500 question test bank to help them create quizzes and tests for their students and access to PowerPoint slides for every chapter to help them plan lessons. I hope that these features are useful for students and readers who are trying to master basic statistics. The second edition of Statistics for the Social Sciences, a general linear model approach, is published by Cambridge University Press and is the ideal textbook for social science programs that require one semester of basic statistics as a graduation requirement.